Welcome back to the warm-up. So, today, I wanted to talk a lot about advanced NBA stats. Because a lot of people on Twitter don't understand some of this stuff. Uh, a lot of people I talk to don't even like, I don't, I don't even know what that is. And blah, 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 right? So, I know a little bit about it. And so, I took it upon myself to learn and like take a couple hours, honestly, and study what some of the most used NBA advanced stats are. Like, what they mean. Are they important? What are the pros and cons, right? All that stuff. I'm, I'm going over three main ones, okay, that I think everyone should understand and that are kind of really, they're pretty interesting, actually. If you guys, if you wanted to see a part two of this and suggest stats that I should go over, share, talk, you know, talk about or highlight, then, you know, let me know. I, I'll do it because I, I, I want to do more of that. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fun to just broaden my understanding about basketball and and it helps me be a better fan, be more intrigued to certain the certain nuances of the game, stuff like that. So the first one we're going to talk about today is PER or player efficiency rating. So this this is a pretty so, pretty solid one, um, easy to understand. It basically takes a sum total of a player's good and bad plays over the course of the game, like. Oh, he scored 20 points, but he had like four turnovers. or Kind of like assist to, to turnover ratio. Kind of, kind of like how that works, where it's like, oh, he averages... Is this assist to turnover ratio is like one or two, right? If you played fantasy basketball before, you pretty much understand how this is. Like, you, you, mit, you lose points for how many shots they take, but then you get those points back if they make a certain one. So, like, that's how the efficiency kind of works. So, that's pretty much it. That's If you played fantasy basketball, PER is how that runs pretty much okay so the, the pros of this are it's a good overall way to see how effective a player is in a game you know if they are missing a lot of shots if they score a lot of points right it's really like points assists rebounds steals blocks field goal percentage three percentage free throw right they use that to kind of determine what kind of player that player is oh a defensive player three-point shooter the cons are like since certain stats like steals and blocks don't exactly correlate to how good you are as a defender. Good two-way players or like good solid, solid defenders are pretty much always going to be at a disadvantage because they're not putting up those offensive stats. And if you're if you're a good defensive player, like lockdown, let's say I'm guarding somebody, right? And this would never happen because I don't play in the NBA. But the guy like I'm guarding Kawhi Leonard, okay? I don't let Kawhi score on me the whole game, but I don't get any steals or any blocks on him, right? And I score like five points. I'm I'm definitely going to be at a disadvantage in terms of like the guys like Jason Tatum or Giannis or Jokic who are putting up all these box score stats, which are good, but it doesn't showcase everybody. It's not a consistent stat, an advanced stat for everybody. And that's that's kind of the trend that we'll see with advanced stats. Is there's like pretty there's good pros. I mean, there's a lot of them, and so the pros are here for all of them, but the cons aren't. Are there exactly why? Not everybody knows what they are or how they're used, right? Even though there's some pretty interesting ones out there. So the next one is box plus minus or BPM. So BPM basically uses kind of the same thing almost. A uh, uh, player's box score information, like the position and the ov- the team's overall performance to estimate kind of like how much the player contributed in a certain game, right? And it's always per 100 possessions played. That's pretty much, that's pretty standard for a lot of advanced stats, right? So... Almost the same thing as PER, but what I've noticed, and I'll, I'll put this up on the screen too, is if you win, you're probably going to be in the in the plus, right? But if you lose, you're probably going to be in the minus. Like, great example is like 2018 LeBron. Team would lose in the finals, right? He lost in the finals, but he's probably going to be in the plus because he's doing a ton, <laughs> right, to help out that team. But... Like, does that make sense? Like, if you're going to lose a game, you're probably not going to be in the plus unless you're 2018 LeBron. Does that make sense? Um, And so there's some really, really interesting things with, like, the career box plus minus, like, how good overall in the career that player was. Like, if they're plus two, that means that they were plus two points per 100 possessions for their team, right? So they're you want them on the floor. Right, and we hear a bunch of stuff like I know Jokic, they're plus thirteen point six or something, whatever, uh, with him on the floor, and then one time, like normally, it's like they're minus fifty with him off the floor, right? But there was a couple games where they were like plus nine point six with him off the floor, which that drop off is not that crazy. People were like, "What does that mean about Jokic?" Right? There's that's pretty pretty interesting stuff, but it's just to show kind of an average production from player to player, right? 
And I put this up on the screen about the Clippers and, you know, they just played a game, a game against the Heat in which they won. So the majority of the players that you see are in the plus, right? If you don't see a negative, that means they're in the plus. But look at Westbrook. Westbrook, for some reason, is in the negative. And I don't, I don't know why. That, and that, that goes to my point of, like, the pros are, it's easy to see how effective the best players are, like PG and Kawhi, who we see right here, and Harden. But the cons, it doesn't favor bench players very well. And it hates the eye test. Like, advanced stats do not like the eye test. So as a Clippers fan who watched that whole game from start to finish, I thought Russ was amazing. I thought he played well, hard, good defense. But just like the BER, just because I don't get stats in the box in the box score, doesn't like that That doesn't show up for the box plus minus. It, it makes me negative, right? So it's, it's really interesting in terms of production. Once again, it's good to show how good the good players are, but it doesn't really help out in the bench players. Right now, here is one that I actually knew absolutely zero about before learning about all this. And shout out to stathead.com or basketball reference. I, I used a lot of their articles and Bleacher Report. I went through a bunch of different sources to kind of like hone in and take all that and put it into one thing to explain to you guys. Hence this video, right? But win shares. If you have, if you don't know what win shares are, pay attention to this one. This one is very, very, very interesting. Okay. Um, it spreads out basically the wins that a team gets over the course of the season and gives them to players who like own those wins. Okay. So if the Clippers get 60 wins, that would be nuts. I would love that. They get 60 wins. They basically, this stat divvies those up among players, right? So to, ex to explain that Kareem has had the highest single season win share record for the 71, 72 bucks. With, so he had 25.4 win shares, right? Out of the 63 wins that team had that year, Kareem owns, quote unquote, like 25 of them. This shows a lot about how good a player is, right? And, and that's pretty much what advanced stats are at this point from what we've talked about. Advanced stats show how good players are on their respective teams. So that shows, so the 71, 72 bucks win 63 games. Kareem owns 25 of them. It's kind of like stocks, right? So like, you take Kareem off that team, he goes to the Lakers. I can't remember when he went to the Lakers. But effectively, you lose 25 games. So they're at what, 38 games at that point? 38, 38 wins without Kareem, right? That's how important he is. So I can see that that's pretty standard for like guys like LeBron, like MJ, right? Like we can see that over the course of history. You can go look and see how many win shares they had um, and how their teams were affected after they left, right? Or got to a certain team, right? So it's interesting because a player can have a negative win shares, <laughs> like meaning that they, they played so poorly that they literally lost games, which is hilarious because zero is like average, right? That's like, that's the, the mean, right? And so like you play so bad, so consistently that you're actively losing four games, meaning that imagine if Kareem had a player on, the, on that Bucks team was at negative four win shares, right? They get rid of that guy. They're now effectively a 67-win team. Does that make sense? It's it's really, really interesting to look at. So the pros of this are like, it's very good at showing who the best players are. And you really break it down even more and see like how good those players are on offense and defense. And within all this stuff, there's the offense and defensive win shares. I didn't really want to explain that because... There's a whole formula that you type in and it's like possessions and points scored and minutes and all that stuff. And then the defense. And then you basically combine the offense and the defense to this. So you can break it down even more to see, okay, this guy is really good on offense. Like if Kareem has 21 win shares on offense, but four on defense, probably not a good defensive player. That's not true. But I'm saying you see, bring that together. So it's kind of cool. You can break that down even more and see how many, you know, how effective were they on a certain side of the ball. So a pro is, you know, you, it shows how good the really good players were. And you can break it down even more like I was just talking about um, on offense and defense in respects to other players. Like, oh, Kawhi in this season had this many win shares and his defensive win shares were this. And his offensive, but this was better than this guy's. So it's kind of fun if you really want to get into it and, and look at all that. But the cons, it favors a little bit of the eye test. Like, like I said, like good players are good in this. Like even great players are great, obviously. But, like, due to the nature of it being pretty much, like, purely offensive and defensive stats, like metrics, it, it, it's, not an, it's not important enough to make it, like, a stat, you know, for, for normal viewers to watch. <laughs> it's, it's, like, good players in this metric are already good. 
and we don't really need this stat to show that they're a good right there aren't very many outliers in win shares it's pretty standard like oh this guy is the best player on this team and that team got a lot of wins he's a lot of win shares right it's not like oh this is a sleeper of a win share no that's the best players have high win shares that's pretty much how it goes so that's why i'm saying it's not like that important of a stat but it's kind of cool if you want to break it down on offense and defense so that that's it those are the three stats that i want to talk about today um once again, I, I like doing this. I like looking at I actually saw some books that I'm like want to buy because they talk so much about stats and just I want it in my brain. I want it in in here in the database, right? But let me know what stats you guys want me to go over and explain um, or just if I want to do another one. If you guys want me to do another one, then let me know and I'll do it. So I had a really, really fun time doing this. This is like super nerdy and I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, <laughs> So anyways, we got some fun stuff going on. Um, this month, it's 2024, January, I'm recording this January 2nd. The last week of January, I'm going to be going over the 2024 draft prospects. I, I started recording some of those already and, and writing scripts and, and looking over and gathering stats and stuff. And that this is not a very good draft class. And so I'm going to be going over some of like my favorites. I was going to do top five. But I don't think those are top five. There's some really interesting prospects later down. I'm talking like in the seventies that I'm like, you don't want to miss this guy. So it's still very early on in that, but I'm going to be going over that. Once again, it's going to be like another week, like the quarter season review week. It's going to be bang, 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 right? Video every single day for a week, a new prospect every single day. So subscribe if you want to see that. That's going to be happening last week of January. I'm very, very excited for it. And then next week, we've got very, very fun videos on the GOAT debate. So get ready for those. That's going to be super, super fun. Um, I've got my take on the GOAT debate. And you'll kind of see where I'm going with that and where my whole philosophy as a basketball fan lies in terms of the GOAT debate. i got two videos coming out next Wednesday, next Wednesday and next Saturday about the GOAT debate. It's going to be like a two-parter. So watch the first one and then watch the second one. So it's going to be super, super fun. I'm so excited. So anyways, um, check out Twitter at the Warm Up 5. I'm on there all the time, constantly. Um, doing a lot more shorts. Stop the podcast. Um, just wanted to focus on YouTube and pushing out to other things. So um, all of my other socials are linked in the description. Go check those out. Pretty much just the same content, but maybe there's going to be new content. So yeah, uh, that's all that I got. Um, once again, let me know if you guys want another advanced stats video. I had, a, I had a blast doing this. Seriously, I was like I was like a little kid. <laughs> it was awesome. So anyways, that's all I got for today. Peace out. We out.